Thank you for purchasing a set of Applitec drywall finishing tools. The following video will explain how to run the tools in drywall application. Keep this video for future reference or to train future employees who may want to use the tools. We will start by introducing you to the working parts of the taper and how to assemble before using. The taper is comprised of an air end, a tube with its component parts, and the taping head. To assemble, using the SS latches. Clamp on the air end to the bottom of the tube. Next, line up the small groove in the tube with the corresponding nipple on the taper head and clamp down the SS latches. Then attach the arm mechanism and screw down tight. Your taper is now assembled. To load the paper tape, unlatch the tape holder, place the tape on spool, reattach the holder. Guide the paper tape around the arm, slide into the slot, and slide tape until it can be picked up by the advancing mechanism. To advance the tape, pull down on the lever on the sleeve, then push the sleeve towards the taper head. Spool tension should be loose or paper drag can result. To extend the arm wheel for taping flats or angles, extend the sleeve toward the taper head without the advanced lever engaged. There's enough spring action on the wheel that with the sleeve fully extended, the wheel can keep its tension against the tape. Here is the on-off flow valve on the side of the taping head. Pull out to clean. For filling, here is the off position. For taping, here is the on position. This tools metering system is not a wheel rolling on the board, pulling a cable, and thus putting mud on the paper tape. You are the metering system. You do that by adjusting the knob on the air regulator. Snap out knob and turn clockwise for more air. Counterclockwise for less air. That sets the amount of mud you will need for the speed you want to tape. If you find that you don't have enough mud for the speed you want to tape, turn the air pressure up. If you have too much mud, turn the air pressure down. To first fill the taper, place onto filler, engage air lever to send the piston to the taper head. Turn on-off valve to off position. Fill taper full. Remember to lubricate piston with recommended dishwashing soap on a daily basis. To start taping, turn the on-off lever to on position. Advance the tape while engaging the air lever for a second. This will put mud on the end of the tape. Extend sleeve to press the tape to the board. You're now ready to go. Engage the air lever Wait for a split second, then get right up to taping speed. When you are coming up to your cut point, approximately two inches before you stop, release the air lever and cut tape by pulling on sleeve. We have a scissors cutting mechanism on the tape applicator. With the taper, you have the ability to back roll the tape into the angles to set it better. Without the air lever engaged, Slide the sleeve towards the taper end, extending the wheel into the angle, and roll backwards. To reduce the drag on the tape in the inside angles, roll backwards with the creaser wheel extended to stick the tape into the angle. Then roll tape six inches to one foot out of the corner. Now lightly extend the creaser wheel 
to crease tape into the angle. To clean, detach the taper end and air end from the tube. You can spray clean the three component parts, but do not drop the air end into a bucket of water. For shorter or longer taping requirements, detach the air and taper ends from the existing taping tube and reattach to the shorter or longer taping tube. You can detach to clean or exchange the cutting blade parts by removing two hex nuts and washers. Remove the blade doubler and blade. Place new doubler in place, tighten down the hex nuts, and align the finger on the blade flush with the edge of the cutter bar. Unscrewing the four Phillips head screws and two upper shoulder screws and lifting assembly off the body can remove the complete cutting mechanism. Reattach in reverse order. Setting up the cannon. The cannon is the air-powered compound applicator. Let's assemble the cannon. First, you need to lubricate the piston at least every day. You can use most dishwashing soaps or no pock lubricant you can purchase from us. Amply apply lubricant to the felt wiper strip on the piston. Then seat the first seal into the cannon. Drop some water on the felt strip, then seat the second seal and push the piston down the tube. A good test to see if you've done this correctly is to physically blow the piston down the tube. If you can, the next step is to wet the O-rings on the mud and air ends and slide both onto the green cannon and latch on the end clamps. On your air end, you have an air lever that when squeezed sends air into the cannon pushing the piston down the tube and thus the compound. You adjust the air on the cannon by snapping out the yellow knob on the air regulator and turning the yellow knob clockwise to increase pressure. The cannon's pressure registers on the air gauge. Once you have set the desired air pressure, snap back in the yellow knob. On the other end of the cannon, is the mud end. You have an on-off yellow lever for filling and running the cannon. You have a black flow valve to adjust your material flow. You have a filler nozzle that attaches to a pump and fills the cannon. And you have a hose fitting that all tools attach to. You attach the coders gooseneck and angle head, mud on heads. You can do this procedure with the air hose attached. There is a standard 50-foot cannon hose that quickly connects to the swivel on the cannon. You will attach the other end of the hose direct to your compressor or to one of the pumps you purchased. Setting up the Junior APLA and T-Series pumps. First, you will need a compressor. For finishing, a 3 quarter horsepower compressor or larger set at 120 PSI is sufficient to operate a pump and at least two cannons. For spraying textures, a 5 horsepower with a 30 gallon tank set at 110 PSI gives you enough air to spray high quality textures. The junior pump draws compound up from your pre-mixed five-gallon bucket. Attach the compressor hose on the back of the pump. There's a yellow knob on the air regulator that you will need to pull out 
and turn clockwise to increase the pressure on the pump. Turn it until you get about 95 PSI on the gauge. Attach the mechanical filler to fill the mechanical taper or the cannon filler to fill the cannon. Make sure you prime the pump before each daily use. Pulling back the air lever will initiate the pumping action of the junior pump. Note, it is important that after you drop the junior pump into the mixed compound, engage the air lever and bleed the air out of the pump and filler tubes before filling any tools. The junior pump is ready to use. The APLA and T-Series pumps are gravity-fed pumps. To set up the pumps, first attach the top of the J-pipe to the top of the reservoir tank and cam lock the bottom of the J-pipe to the fitting at the bottom of the pump. With both yellow levers on the J-pipe and back of the pump in the off position, attach the compressor hose from your compressor to the back of the pump. For finishing, pull out the yellow knob and turn it clockwise until 95 PSI registers on the gauge. To mix mud in the reservoir, first add water until there is water at the bottom of the tank. Then add the joint compound. Drop in your paddle, add the correct amount of water, and mix to the desired thickness. With a U-pipe pointed at an empty bucket, turn the yellow lever on the J-pipe to the on position to bleed the water out of the pump. When you see compound, turn the yellow lever off, point the U-pipe back at the tank, turn on the yellow lever, rotate the mud, and whip up the mud to the desired thickness. Filling the cannon. On the junior pump, place a piece of mesh tape here to screen mud. Attach the junior cannon filler tube, engage air lever, bleed air through the cannon tube, wet the outside of the fill valve on the cannon, then place cannon onto the filler to fill. With the yellow on-off lever open, engage the air lever and send the piston to the mud end of the green tube. Close the cannon on-off lever halfway. Open the yellow on-off pump lever for one second to bleed the air that is up against the piston. Close off the cannon yellow lever and then completely fill the cannon. Inability to initially bleed air can cause popping of the cannon. On the APLA pump and T-series pump, first take off the U-pipe. Take a five inch long piece of mesh tape, fold it over, and place it on top of the J-pipe. Now cam lock in the cannon filler in place. This screens any specks in the finishing mud. Wet the outside of fill valve on the cannon. Place the cannon on the cradle and in position to fill. To fill the cannon, follow the junior pump instructions. Cannon's operation. Attach the airline and set the air gauge to about 25 pounds PSI on the cannon until you get used to the cannon's operation. Engaging the lever sends air to the piston, pushing the piston, and thus the compound of the coater. Notice, since the sleeve valve can get dirty through normal use, you'll need to lubricate the air lever with silicon spray. Do not use WD-40 or any oil lubricant since that will expand the O-rings and cause the cannon to become sticky. Never drop your air end into water. The air regulator components will become dirty and not work correctly. Mud compresses, so when you engage the air lever, you can see the piston compress the mud in the cannon tube. When coating a wall, engage the air, wait a split second, and then move the coater on the wall. If you start too soon, you will see a void in the coat. When you release the air lever, the mud decompresses in the tube. Very importantly, when you release the air lever, drag the coater on the wall for at least three inches before taking the coater off the wall. This will use up all the mud on the wall.
if you pull the coater off too soon, you will have a glob of mud on the blade. The next coat you attempt will be a mess. Filling other tools with the tape and toolbox filler. On the junior pump, attach the tape tool filler, attach the mechanical taper tool in place, pull lever and fill. On the box filler, cam lock the box filler in place, pull the lever and fill. On the Apla pump and T-series pump, place the tape and toolbox filler on top of the J-pipe. Rest the mechanical taper on the cradle. Turn the yellow lever and fill. For boxes, change the adapter, turn lever to fill the boxes. Clean up of pumps and tools. To clean up the junior pump, take off the tool filler tube, attach the recycle tube, drop the large black tube into a bucket of water, Engage the air lever and rotate the water to clean out the pump. To clean up the remaining tools, take off the green recycle tube, lock on the three-foot water hose with nozzle, drop the junior pump into another bucket of clean water, and spray clean the tools. During freezing conditions, make sure you tip the pump upside down to drain water from the pump. Failure to do so can result in a cracked pump. To clean the APLA and T-Series pumps, take off the filler, attach the U-pipe, pump out any remaining joint compound into an empty bucket. Next, turn the U-pipe toward the reservoir. Add two to three gallons of clean water Turn on the yellow lever and rotate the water while brushing down the inside of the reservoir. Pump out the dirty water. Attach the three-foot water hose with nozzle. Pour in at least three gallons of clean water and spray clean all dirty tools. Take off the three-foot hose. Place lid with handle in reservoir. Run out water into empty bucket. Clean the inside of reservoir with a rag towel. During freezing conditions, take off J-pipe to drain water from the pump. Failure to do so can result in a cracked pump. Mud on heads for tape on products. All three of our plastic mud on heads screw on top of the cannon. They have wheels for effortless mud application on any surface. You will need to open the material flow valve for the additional material you will need. The inside mud head is designed for application of compound for 90 degree inside tape on corners and hand paper tapers. The flat mud head is designed for application of compound for off angle tape on products and hand paper tapers. The outside mud head is designed for application of compound for 90 degree outside tape on corners. Roll plow operation. After placing the paper tape into the corner, place the roll plow on vertical or horizontal angle, about halfway. Always lead with the wheel and apply ample pressure as you wipe toward the end. Now turn the head around and plow the rest of the angle. You will need to straighten your corners and clean up the bottom of the vertical angle. It can be important to clean off the head of the roll plow in a bucket of water periodically to keep the angles clean. Let's take a look at the coders. Except for the three inch nail spotter, all of the coders have a tensioner system that is adjustable. Here's the tensioner in its relaxed stage. If you look down the blade from one end, you can see the bow on the blade. As you move the tensioner, you tighten down the blade 
which gives you less of a crown. Here is the tensioner fully opened, three quarters open, one half open closed, two thirds closed, three quarters closed, five sixths closed, and fully closed. Our brake system uses the C spring to create tension and break off the wall. When using the coders on butts and vertical flats, engage the secondary spring for tighter tension. It is important that the blade and shoes on the coder are adjusted correctly. Turn your coder upside down. Point the part that screws on the cannon at your chest. The white wheels should be pointing at your ears. With the blade at eye level, look to see that the blade and shoes meet. If one is higher than the other, loosen the screw in the shoe and adjust accordingly. Also check to see that the coder blade is not worn. Continued use with a worn blade will give you bad edges. On the bottom of the coder is the cover. This is not an adjusting mechanism. Always pull down the plate and tighten the screws before running the cannon. These are well-built, sturdy tools and with proper maintenance will perform high quality finishing for years to come. Nail spotters. Our three inch and four and a half inch nail spotters are designed to fill the nails or screws and just skim the board in between. To achieve this result, first thin down the mud, turn the black material flow valve practically off, almost three o'clock, engage the air lever, get up to coating speed, release the air lever just past the second to last screw or nail, and drag the spotter down the board until you use up the mud. If you're getting great edges, but too much mud through the middle of the coat on the three inch spotter, cut back on the air. If you have this with the four and a half inch, tighten down the tensioner and cut back the flow valve if needed. Bead tabs. If you purchased bead tabs, the seven inch coater with bead tabs is designed for fill coating. Set your blade tensioner, pull back the pin, turn and release. You are ready to coat corner bead. If you 10 inch skim coat, set your blade tensioner, pull and turn the pins, cut back your material flow and start your process. If you need to coat bullnose instead of 90 degree, you can take five minutes to change the tabs out. Unscrew the two screws at the end of the coater. Take the right tab and put it on the left and take the left tab and put it on the right. Don't forget to place the shim between the tabs and the coater body before screwing back in the screws. Apple Taper 2 to load the taper, first unlatch the two hinges. Take off the cover. Unravel at least five inches of tape and place in the tape to unravel counterclockwise. Set the tape above the roller. Feed through the brake mechanism and through the guide. As you will notice, there are two brake levers to engage the brake. The brake must be engaged before cutting to create tension and give you a clean cut, and without doing so, will bend the cutting blade over during the cutting procedure. Now attach the cover and you're ready to tape. To tape flats and angles, pull the mesh tape out at least two inches past the roller. Apply brake, place tape, release brake, Back roll the two inches of tape and roll on the mesh tape, getting the bottom taper perpendicular from the taping surface right away. It is very important that when taping, you keep the wheel in contact with the surface at all times. When coming to the end of the taping surface, apply brake two and a half to three inches before the stop point. Apply brake, cut tape.
For angles, the Apple Taper 2 sets the angle and then lays down the edge. To get those short pieces, just pull the correct amount of tape, apply the brake, and cut it off your tummy. To clean the brake, use silicone spray and wipe off the glue buildup. Coating angles over mesh tape. To fill coat the angles, take the two and a half inch angle head, place away from the three-way corner, collapse the angle head into the angle, activate the air level, wait a second, then coat. Starting the angle right in the three-way corner can pull mesh tape. Getting ready to coat. These are timing finesse tools. You will learn to adjust the tool to you, not adjust you to the tool. There are four key items to remember. One, your airflow. For best results, keep your airflow on the gauge a constant. If you like to run your can at 25 PSI, then keep it there. As you get faster on the coders, you might end up running the can at 30 to 35 PSI. Two, your coating speed on the wall. Since your piston and the cannon is pushing material out at a constant rate, you need to run the coater down the wall at a constant speed. It's important to understand that mud compresses and it takes a split second to push the mud to the coating head once the air lubber has been engaged. The process is engage the air, wait a split second, then go and get up to speed right away. Three, your material flow. The material flow valve is a very important adjustment on the cannon. When setting the tool to the speed you want to coat, you should keep your airflow and coating speed a constant. So for the beginner, the material flow knob that adjusts the amount of joint compound you're sending to your coater heads is the dial most important to you. 12 o'clock on the black knob is fully open and 3 o'clock is fully closed. We want you to start out around 1.30 and adjust from there. If you are fill coating with the flow valve at 130, you will keep the air and your speed on the wall the same, but you will turn the black flow valve to somewhere between 215 to 230 because you need a lot less mud to skim coat than you do to fill coat. Four. Pulling your coater angle head off the board at the correct time. Again, mud compresses, so you need to release the air and then travel at least two inches on the board before you pull off the coater. If you don't, you will have a glob on the blade and a mess on the wall the next time you touch the coater to the wall. If your timing is correct, this will be a very clean tool. using the coders and angle heads. Once you have the coder attached to the cannon, you'll need to set up the blade tension system correctly. For seven inch fill coat, set the tensioner from about three quarters to five sixths tight. For the 10 inch fill coat, set the tensioner one half to two thirds tight. For 10 inch skim coat, tighten down the tensioner at least three quarters tight. The same will hold true for the 12-inch skim coat. Once you have set your air and material flow valve, you're ready to coat. Positioning with the tools is very, very important. This is really a hand tool with a big green handle, just like the small brown handle on your hand knife blades. We're going to keep directions fairly simple and easy to remember. First, when coating a four-foot high horizontal flat, Put the green tube in your left hand and extend your arm just like when you learn to ride a bike. You would give me a left hand turn signal. That is how you extend the coder to the wall.
do not bend the tube and lean into the wall. That force would be coming from your elbow, through your forearm, through your wrist, to the way your fingers point, and it is perpendicular to the tube. Again, do not do this. Here's a good test to see if you're doing it right. Put the coder on the wall, take your air hand, and bring it back to your body so the tube is about 80 degrees to the wall. If you're approaching the wall incorrectly, the mechanical push-pull feel, the white wheels will come off the board. If you're extending your hand, holding the tube toward the wall correctly, the wheels will stay on the board and give you the correct wipe-down feel and great edges. For the ceilings and horizontal angles, here's another easy way to remember the correct way to hold the tube and approach the ceiling. Back in grade school, when the teacher asked a question and you knew the answer, you'd raise your hand to get called on. This is the correct way to hold the cannon. Put the tube in your hand and raise your hand to answer the question. If you bend the tube coating your horizontal angles, you'll get too much mud in the angle. You are putting the pressure on the front of the side blades of the angle head, thus too much mud. For vertical flats and angles on your ceiling down coat, put your tube hand on top of the tool, middle, ring, and pinky fingers on one side and the thumb on the other. Your index finger should point at the coater or angle head. Put one foot in front of the other, put enough pressure on the tube to wipe down the flat coat or collapse the angle head before coating. Engage air, wait a split second, and get up to coating speed right away. The air hand will go under your armpit. With flats, release the air two inches before you meet the fresh coat. With angles, Bend your knees when your angle head is down to three feet, release the air at three inches before the floor, and pull off the angle head at one inch above the floor. For coating eight foot to four foot butts, hold the tool just like the vertical flat application we just talked about. The only difference is when you come to the point where you want to pull off the wall before you pull through the flats you pull up on the air hand above the shoulder and that will break off the coater off the board. For coating the zero to four foot butts or vertical flat off the floor, point your toes at the butt or flat you are coating. One foot, two feet behind the other. Your weight should be over your front foot, your hand cupped under the green tube and extended towards the board and the air lever just below your armpit. Engage the air, wait a split second, get up to speed right away. Keep extending your tube hand towards the wall. Bring your air hand and lean your weight from the front foot to the back foot. As you're finishing your coat, release the air lever two inches before you take the coater off the board. Then bring the air hand back below your armpit. For butts on the ceiling, your blade tensioner should be three quarters to fully open. Your feet should be parallel to the seam you are coating, and one foot should be two feet in front of the other. With a cannon in your hand, raise your hand like you know the answer and keep that pressure. Engage the air, wait a split second, get your speed up, shift your weight from your back foot to your front foot, release the air just before you take the coater off the board, and then pull your air hand back to your body to break the coater off the board. Setup instructions for texturing. Our instructional video will quickly teach you how to set up, spray, and clean up with the T-Series texturing pump and texturing guns. You can use the same instructions to set up the Apple pump or Junior pump. The pattern pistol has two air valves. The round air adjustment valve should be completely opened. Use the black knob valve for the on-off and airflow valve. The round silver nut on the back of the pistol determines how far the needle adjusts back and allows the correct amount of air needed when pulling back on the handle. You will find the finer the spray required, the closer you want to adjust the air needle to the appropriate texture tip. 
The coarser the spray required, the further back you want to adjust the air needle from its appropriate texture tip. The pole gun also has two air valves. The small yellow lever is the on-off lever, and the small T-nut is for airflow. The large yellow lever is the material on-off lever. When using this texture gun, remember it's always air on, material on, material off, then air off. Connect the texture lines to the bottom of the pump. The air line can be attached to any of the three air outlets. The pattern pistol, or pole gun, attaches to the opposite end of the texture lines. If working with the pattern pistol, turn the black knob located on the stem just above where the air line is attached slightly open. This eliminates any compound backing up in the air needle. For the pole gun, both yellow levers should be in their off position. Generally, since most textures jobs are more than 15 gallons of spray material, you might want to mix it in pails and then dump into the pump reservoir. Make sure to mix the texture mud to a uniformed desired consistency. Your compressor should be set at the highest PSI that it will go to. Before you connect the air to the pump, make sure that the yellow handle located on the back of the pump is turned into the off position. After checking the handle, you can now connect the air to the pump. Normal operating range for texturing is 30 to 60 PSI, although you may need to set it higher. To set the air, pull the yellow knob located by the air gauge out towards you. Turning the knob clockwise will increase the air to the desired setting. Open the yellow on-off handle on the back of the pump. After the pump stops, you can take the pattern pistol and an empty pail to prime the lines. To prime the lines, just point the pistol into the pail and pull the trigger. Make sure that the air on the pattern pistol is barely on, the black knob on the stem. The texture mud should come out in a steady stream. The stream of mud should not break off. You are also able to regulate the air coming out of the pattern pistol by turning the black knob located above the air on off on the pistol itself. You set the desired speed flow of spray material with the pump. With the pump set at 30 PSI, point the gun you purchased back into the reservoir. Open the yellow material flow valve on the pole gun or pull back the handle on the pistol. Turn the yellow knob on the pump clockwise to the desired speed of compound flow and lock in the PSI desired by pushing the yellow knob back in. If the material is coming out too fast or too slow, the adjustment is made on the air regulator on the back of the pump. If you have turned off the pistol or pole gun, for more than 10 seconds, before spraying again, point the gun back in the reservoir or at the plastic on the windows, give a quick pull or open the yellow lever to eliminate a surge, then start spraying again. To clean the pump and lines out, Follow the priming the lines instructions. When no more mud is left in the pump, add water to the pump to clean out the lines. Always keep the pump off when it is empty. And remember to relieve the pressure off of the texture lines before disconnecting them. In wintertime, detach the material line from the pump to drain water left in the pump. Thank you again for purchasing Applitech drywall finishing tools. If you have any questions after viewing this video or need any future technical assistance, give us a call at 1-800-827-3721.